guys, welcome back to Hobby Time 2.0, or number two. Uh, so the last time we were here, we were working on some uh, road tiles. I'm going to kind of show you guys where they're at and kind of discuss, uh, discuss how that worked out. But uh, these are still my 100 miniatures. I did a little more progress, but you probably can't notice. Most of it have been on these figures here from uh, Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, I think these are from the Stark set. See if I can get some better light over here. So, uh, you know, I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to work on them in this video or not, but, uh, I just got those out. I know the main thing I want to do is I want to finish these bases, at least get these bases painted. Uh, like I said, I'm going to bring the tiles over here. And then the other thing I got to do is I've got to work on gluing or repairing some models. So while we're doing that, you know, we will basically just have a chat with you guys. My goal is to do these live, but a lot of times I'm doing them at 2 in the morning. So obviously that's not going to work out live. Although I don't know with overseas viewers maybe I could get 5 or 6 people. But right now uh, plus I'm also back on my iPhone. Uh, the last one I did I did on my uh, new webcam. But the sound was not that good. I don't know what's, what was going on. But that, that is a camera you're supposed to plug into your computer and then it, it replaces your regular webcam or it acts as your webcam so I'm gonna break that out but I mostly got that for uh, I mostly got that for doing some live streams because I have a camera on my laptop the problem is the sound whenever I've tried to use a mic and I send it through the laptop, the fan literally just hums throughout the whole video or the whole uh, live stream. So with that, I did get rid of the, 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 the fan humming, but the quality of the sound is still a little janky. So I don't know, I might have to play with the distance or I may have to see if I can separate the sound from the video and clean up the sound a bit. But, you know, I'm just trying to get uh, get to the point where I can do a live stream and have sound and video. And at least, uh, you know, at least you don't have that humming in the background or buzzing sound. So, but anyway, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on these guys. Uh, and what we're going to be using is... That's another thing. I'm going to try not to uh, get up so much tonight and disappear. I rewatched that video and... Yeah, I didn't I didn't think that was very polite to keep getting up leaving you guys sitting here. So we're going to be using some of this to me. This is what I love to use flat earth on all my bases. Most of my bases. I've been doing some sci-fi stuff lately and haven't used that. So we're going to use a brush from here that I got from uh the dollar dollar tree. I'm not going to call it dollar store because the stuff is no longer a dollar. It's a dollar twenty-five. So, I don't know which one I'm going to use. Maybe I'll start with this one, even though it's a little big. But I specifically bought it for this one. But I don't know if I want to do bases with it. But then I like this one here. Although the shape is not perfect for bases. So, we will see. So I was trying to think of what I was going to talk about uh, tonight during this this live. <laughs> this isn't live. But during this uh, chat. And I don't know. I guess the only thing I can really talk about that I haven't talked about before. Now I just said I wasn't going to walk away. So I'm going to actually pause this. I'll be right back. Okay. So I had to go get a board. <laughs> which you probably can see just off to the left. Uh, and the reason I needed to get that was so when I paint these, I can move them over. But uh, what I was thinking of talking about was kind of the state 
of the hobby in 2022 going into 2022 i mean we're we're basically two months into the year and um just some things that you know things that are worth talking about as far as what the hobby looks like this year so obviously the elephant in the room in everybody's room is covid and whether or not we're going to have conventions and regular shows and things. And from what I've been hearing politically, and I don't like to talk politics on here, because uh, I'd probably lose all of you as friends. <laughs> but uh, from what I've been hearing politically is that a lot of the restrictions may get lifted this year, right around election time, you know, so all of these places that have restrictions may just lift them all of a sudden out of the blue because people are going to the polls in uh, November of this year. So I don't really think, though, that that's going to affect a lot of the hobbies or the conventions. I already know Gen Con and both Origins have said they're going to be requiring vaccines and masks. So... I don't know. I, I, I won't be going to either one of those. And I don't know when I'll, if, if I'll ever go back to them because, you know, I don't know. That might be the foreseeable future. So I don't know if I'll ever go to another Gen Con or another Origins, which I don't really. I, missing Origins is not, is not that uh, unusual for me because Origins was always kind of a hit or miss, even though I live right next to Ohio. Gen Con, on the other hand, you know, at one time I had, heck, I'd probably say like a 20-year streak of having went without missed any. Uh, although my last two, before I moved out here, I had only went for like a day or a weekend. Because uh, typically Gen Con, I would go all four days, even if I had to take off work. But there were some things even before COVID that had caused me to kind of start rethinking whether or not I was going to be still doing Gen Con anymore. And those things, were they, they were raising prices. They were going woke. Like, they started having a lot of woke events and things, which a lot of it doesn't it didn't affect me because the way I go to the con, you know, I, I, I could have cared less what they were doing as the the feature or the lineup stuff. But one of the problems I started to notice was as as Gen Con went woke, uh a lot of the attendees wound up being woke. And I'm not saying that about the regular attendees. I'm saying they started to attract kind of a new new breed of attendees. You know, who kind of had the idea that, well, this is our convention now. And as far as Gen Con was concerned, yeah, it was their convention now. Like, guys like us, or me, uh, they could care less what we thought about any of the changes or the guests or the lineups or any of that. So, uh, that's why it kind of stopped going as much. Because uh, I just kind of had a small subset of stuff I'd like to do. And... uh you know, I could do most of that in a weekend, which was like go to the auction, uh, you know, play some games in the evening like Boat Action or Frostgrave or other miniature games I could get in. Uh, I always like to try to find a new one. So that was cool. And then walk around the uh, the hall. Uh, and that was about it. I mean, I, I, I usually spent my convention... Somewhere between those three, those three or four places. I mean, I almost never did any like dungeon, dungeon exploring or cosplaying or any of that. So those things I could do on a weekend, you know, and it's just even when I went there for four days, I usually just used the other days to walk around and just see what was what was going on in the in the convention and, you know. Just just check on things. I didn't really do anything. It was just a lot of walking around. But, uh, yeah, so I think this year, I don't really think no matter what happens that Gen Con or Origins are going to change their policy. I know uh, uh, 
Adepticon is happening in March or April. They have the same policy. Uh, they were saying they had to do it because of Chicago or whatever's policy, which I don't, it's not actually in Chicago. So, but, uh, you know, that's, that's cool. I guess, I guess they'd rather put all the restrictions on it and go ahead than not put the restrictions and have to put them back later. So I don't know, but as far as the year looks, you know, I would love to get back to one or two conventions. I mean, if my work schedule stays the same, it's not going to matter what kind of policies they got. I just won't have the time to go to any, even if it was across the street, I couldn't go. So, uh, but if my work schedule lets up, which that might be a new problem, because that would probably mean I'm out of a job. But, <laughs> but, uh, Assuming my work schedule let up and I still had a job, I would I wouldn't mind trying to catch a few uh a few conventions before before the year is out. Not even so much to pick up stuff, because I I've picked up more than enough stuff uh since the year began. So I'm really I really can't think of anything that I'm sitting here saying, Oh man, I wanna go to a convention so I can see that. Uh now there's some things I'd like to go to a convention to try out. Uh and I'm not even talking about stuff that came out this year, but stuff that that is relatively new that I wouldn't mind going to a convention to try out to play a game of. And uh although right off the top of my head, I probably couldn't tell you what that what that stuff is. So maybe I'm lying. Uh Cause I know I was, I think I did a video the other day where I said it was something I didn't want to buy. I just wanted to play it, but I don't remember what that was, but that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. You know, there's a few things that have come out or I've seen that I really don't have any desire to buy it, but you know, I'd like to play it or play some games and stuff. So, uh, but I mean, even even with that miniature speaking, I can't really think of anything just hot and new that has dropped. Like I can't think of a new system with miniatures and everything that has come. Now I know there's a lot of stuff through Kickstarter, but I don't really I don't really consider Kickstarter. Uh, I don't really consider Kickstarter as a as a release in the hobby. Most of those are just kind of companies or creators and you know their stuff comes out when it comes out and the problem with kickstarters are by time they're out being played it might be three years after it was announced and people were excited about it and you done forgot all about it or you kind of don't even care right you just don't even care because what happens is by time it's out being played you're already at a convention looking at Kickstarters for something else that they say is going to be out in a year or two years, and they're getting you excited about that. So, and that's kind of one of the things that happens with these Kickstarters as far as whether or not it, it actually expands the hobby because... Let's just take a company like Mythic. Like Mythic is like the biggest Kickstarter, you know, the biggest Kickstarter. Man, I'm trying to think of a word that I can say on camera. <laughs> That's not, uh, you know, it's not considered a a per, per, uh, a pejorative or whatever the word I'm thinking of. Uh but they're like kind of the the biggest Kickstarter um, Kickstarter per people out there, right? The people that are out there constantly doing Kickstarters is is Mythic Games. But let's use them as an example. So like they had a game called Reichbusters that had miniatures and all of this stuff, and everybody was excited about it. You know, it's it had all these mechanics and all this great, great boards and all this stuff, right? Well, I mean, Reichbusters came out 
a year or two years after it was kickstarted. But by the time Reichbusters was coming out, they had all they were at the conventions pimping, you know, a Viking game they had, some kind of Viking saga game. So all last year that's everybody heard about this Viking game where you immerse yourself in this Viking adventure and you know, you you, you can use an app and all this other stuff. Well, this year if you were to go to Gen Con and see Mythic's booth they're not going to be pushing the Viking game, even though it's due to come out this year or maybe next year. They're going to be pimping their newest game. And I don't even mean the newest game as in the newest game that they've done this year. Because the game, they did a game this, well, I'd say this year, but within the last year. I think it, it was like in September which was called Siege 6, right? So by the time you go to Gen Con in August, right, Siege 6 should be coming out, but that's not the game they're going to be hyping at Gen Con. What they're going to be hyping at Gen Con is whatever Kickstarter they decide to launch in July. Because I guarantee you they will be launching some other Kickstarter in July and they'll launch something else in September and that's what they do. I think they try to launch like three Kickstarters a year. Now, when the stuff ever comes out, that's not as important to them as launching the Kickstarters. And as long as people show up and, you know, pledge millions of dollars for these things, they're going to keep doing that. So it's hard to really account, count something like that as part of the hobby. I'm not, it's hard for me to say, well, I can't wait to go to Gen Con and try out Seed 6. Because, yeah, they'll probably have one copy of the game there, but nobody's going to be playing it, right? There aren't going to be tables set up. There's not going to be tournaments going on. There's not going to be, you know, a bunch of stuff to buy, right, that's been released to the public. Here's your expansion for this and all that. It's going to be just, oh, here's a table. Here's where you can late pledge. And the core game is out now. The rest of the stuff will be out uh, in 2023. Right, so it's kind of hard to to say I want to go to a convention so I can do Seed 6. And I'm back Seed 6. So I would love for it to be delivered before Gen Con. I don't think it's going to be. Even though when they did the campaign, they kind of made it seem like they would have that game ready in six months. But, you know... It's obviously been longer than six months. Uh, so that's kind of the first kind of the first thing about the hobby this year is really, you know, really you're pretty much going to have to do what you did last year, whatever it was. If you, you know, if there was some convention that went last year that ran during the pandemic or the, uh, you know, whatever was going on last year, that's what you're probably going to have to bet on. Anything else, you know, there's no guarantee. But, I mean, if you look at the biggest companies right now, I'm going to be honest with you, and I really hate saying this, because I'm going to start sounding more and more like a GW fanboy, which I am totally not, right? But the only real miniature company I can think of that has consistently put out new products, that has given us new things like this year and even toward the end of last year uh, and supported that stuff is Games Workshop. So, you know, Games Workshop brought out Kill Team Octarius, which I think that they announced that like in March or something. And pretty much since March, they have consistently put out new stuff and new factions. We've seen them bring out new Necromunda boxes this year. Uh, they re-released Curse City this year. Uh, I think they've been doing something with their, their Eldar, which they call Eldari. They've been doing some stuff like we had Dominion come out last year. And, you know, they've been trying to support Dominion. I, I don't, I just don't sense any kind of big buzz out there for Dominion. 
I mean, I think people play it because it's the only kind of fantasy option they got. What I would really, now if you, I, I will say this, I'll correct that with one thing about not looking forward to anything at a convention. Is if I got word that Gen Con, I mean not Gen Con, that GW was going to have some stuff for the old world at a convention. Yeah, it would be hard for me not to make that convention. Like if they were going to have tables and miniatures and like the the kind of uh the kind of pre pre release a pre release at a convention where the, even if it wasn't for sale, but like you could play it, you could see the kingdoms and the miniatures for the the return of the old world. That's what would get me out. Right now, I don't. I I might still not be able to get in to a convention because I'm not, you know what. But I mean that that is what would get me. Heck, I'd probably pay for a virtual one just to see that. And I mean, I really don't like all that virtual stuff, but. I don't think Gen Con's coming out with anything for the old world this year. You know, and you really can't say nothing because they, when they announced it, which I think was in 2019 now, they said it would be, you know, long term down the road. Like, I think they said at least three years. So 19, 20, 21, 22. So early as we probably should expect to start hearing any real stuff about that is 2023. And I still think there's a part of GW that uh, there's a part of GW that still would like to just run with Age of Sigmar and not even try to re- revive the old world. So they could just drop that, and they I don't even think they would tell anybody that they had decided to drop it. <coughs> so. That's one of the reasons I haven't been sitting around trying to keep track of uh, what's going on with the old world. Because, you know, they could literally just drop that and not even tell us that they've dropped it. You know, so that is a real distinct possibility. But if you look at the other miniature companies out there, I mean, what company can you name that has really put out something, quote, new uh that they that they have put out and supported and advertised and marketed. I know uh Mantic did a new what is that Dead Zone kick Dead Zone starter set two player but first of all Dead Zone obviously isn't new. It's just they just did a new two player or a new set with some new miniatures. Uh, and secondly, the, the the set itself really doesn't have anything new. You get more of the same terrain they've been putting out in the last two versions of that. And you get, I think, one and a half or one new faction. Which, I mean, was not really all that exciting either from what I saw about the faction. I think it was like Rat People and then I don't know whether they were rebels or security or whatever the force was. So you can't really you can't really look to that. I mean, I think they've done some stuff with Vanguard or some of them, but you know, those are just releases. And it's just it's just I mean, typically Mantic is not going to like carry the year with any kind of releases. Like they just people just don't look at Mantic like that. You know, Mantic is kind of the company that uh, they're going to just find different ways to sell you the same stuff over and over again. Like they've been selling these terrain crates over and over. And I, I imagine they may do another one of them this year because they're due to come up with some new idea to try to sell you more terrain crates. But I've actually seen 3D print sets <laughs> that, are, that are better and I seriously mean that, that are better than what they're selling with their terrain crate stuff. But I guarantee you, if they do another terrain crate Kickstarter, I mean, what if they done fantasy, sci-fi? So let's just see. Uh, they've done fantasy and modern sci-fi. Their sci-fi one did not really do well. Matter of fact, I don't even know if they kickstarted their sci-fi stuff. 
But they've done fantasy. Then they did kind of the modern stuff, which did well. But, I mean, I don't know what, what they would do next as far as terrain goes. I mean, what I mean, uh... Well, they can't really do World War II because they did part of that in their last last one. Uh, so, I mean, maybe they could do try to do some Western terrain or uh, maybe they'll do Sci-Fi 2.0 or I don't know. You know, I have no idea what they're going to do. So... Privateer Press, I don't even know what Privateer Press is selling anymore, just to be honest. I, I literally have no idea what they sell anymore. Uh, Steamforge Games seems like all they're pumping out is Critical Role product. So if you're not into that whole, you know, role-playing, role-playing, actors role-playing stuff, I mean... Nothing's coming out of Steamforge Games. So I said Mantic. I said GW. Uh, Steamforge Games. Who used to do Guild Ball, in case you don't remember. Reaper is launching their Reaper Bone 6. Now, that will, that will get a lot of people excited. I will say that. And... Yeah, I will say that. I think the Reaper Bone 6 will get a lot of people excited. Unfortunately, I won't be one of them. <laughs> I did do Bones 5. And like I said, I did like what they ended up doing with it. I did not like the initial offering, meaning that initial core set that they wanted you to pay for was just trash. And I stand by that. It was just a bunch of re re-release miniatures that was already in their line i just thought it was trash uh but they recovered nicely with the themed sets toward the end when all of them all of the sets became themed sets and i do think i from what i've heard they're going to repeat that like they're going to do more themed sets this this kickstarter so that will get my interest whether i will pledge or wait to do a late pledge i don't know yet but uh again that's the whole thing with a kickstarter so and i already know reaper's not going to many conventions this year so even if you wanted to get hyped about reaper you know doing reaper six and whatever they're, they're gonna show or sneak peek will be part of it uh you're not going to be able to do that at any convention because they're not, first of all, they're not coming. And secondly, they wouldn't have anything to show anyway. You know, Reaper's, Reaper's Bones Kickstarters now are not, they're not one year fulfillment. They've changed all of them to two years fulfillment now. Meaning, if you pledge for Bone 6, you will not be getting your stuff unless you live to 2024. If you don't live to 2024, somebody else is going to be getting your stuff. I mean, and then, of course, that, that that's assuming they're not late, which they reserve the right to be, is late by six months or a year. So, I mean, I don't, I don't really count that. I'm sure people will plunk their money down. I'm sure they're going to raise the pledge, like what used to be $100 or $125. I'm sure they'll probably try to get $140 or $150. And people will pledge for it because somebody will look at it and say, Oh my God, I can get 200 miniatures for $150. That's less than a dollar per mini, which is just stupid. Because half the time, they'll give you like some... They'll give you like some wolves and say you get 12 wolves. <laughs> then they'll give you some goblins and say you get 15 goblins. Then they'll give you uh they'll give you some uh orcs. You're going to get 15 orcs. You know, 15 kobolds. And then they'll say, you know, they'll say, "Oh, but you get the town set with 12 villagers." And you get the night set with eight nights. And so, but what they're doing is they're really packing it full of duplicates. So out of those so-called 200 miniatures you get, there may only be 
20 different scarps. And then out of those 20 different scarps, 10 of them, they literally giving you like on average 10 each. So that's 100 of your 200 miniatures. The other 10, half of them, they're giving you like 5 each. So that's another 25. The other 5 or whatever, you know, they, they will mix those up and then add some more and call them stretch goals. But that's how people get so excited claiming they're getting 200 miniatures for only a $150. That's less than a dollar per mini. That's what I guarantee you, you will hear that. Soon as Reaper starts their, their Bone 6, wait to see the first person that, that starts advertising it. And watch them say, use the word, that's less than a dollar per mini. Which I just think is asinine. So, so yeah, but anyway, Reaper will probably be doing their Bone 6 this year. Uh, like I said, Mantic released Dead Zone 2 toward the end of last year. So I don't, I don't expect them to do anything, although they may do another... Some other terrain crate Kickstarter, which again is a Kickstarter. So, I mean, how is that helping us in the hobby this year? But so you might see a Kickstarter out of them. Like I said, I don't know what Private Air Press is doing. Steam Forge isn't doing anything. What's the what's another big one? I mean, you got Frost Grave coming out with every kind of grave. I mean, Frost Grave, Ice Grave, Star Grave, Desert Grave, uh, Vampire Grave. I mean, it's all it's all Frost Grave. I mean, I, I heard somebody say Silver Bayonet used the same system as you guessed it, Frost Grave. So I don't really count that either. You know, whatever Osprey's putting out, you know, I think I think I think we've all had enough of Frost Grave by this time. I mean, I don't even see people playing Frostgrave anywhere. So, but I mean, I'm sure they'll they'll come up with some other version of of the Frostgrave so-called franchise and do that. I mean, like I said, I don't have a problem with Frostgrave. I just have a problem with uh a whole series of cookie cutter games based on Frostgrave. That's what I got a problem with. But I don't have a problem with Frostgrave for what it was. I even like Rangers of Shadow Deep. Right? Because I thought Rangers of Shadow Deep was kind of a natural extension of Frostgrave. But after that, that was it. Right? I mean, and wait, Ghost Archipelago, I like that too. Because again, I thought that was kind of a natural extension of Frostgrave. Right? It just kind of gave you some rules for, you know... Hitting the islands and all that kind of stuff. I did not really like the whole Heritor stuff with them having powers as Heritors. That was kind of silly. But uh, I like them changing the location without changing the genre. But the minute they started taking Frostgrave into all these genres, I did not like that. And I mean, I'm just waiting for them to say, say something like World War II Grave or... Some kind of way to create some kind of World War II or modern version of Frostgrave. You know, I don't know. They might call it a Special Ops Grave or Dark Grave or Stealth Grave. I don't know. But I'm not, I have zero interest in that. So again, you got Osprey, Reaper, Mantic, Privateer Press, Steamforge. I mean, you could bring up Corvus Belly, but is anybody really sitting around? Waiting for Corvus Belly. They, they they have Infinity. And then everything else they put out is like totally silly. I mean, just let's just be honest. It's totally silly. Like that whole Aristia, I don't know what that was all about. Then they came out recently with some game with like some miners. I don't know what it was. Like miners battling each other. That was just silly. So... Don't sit around waiting on Corvus Belly to come up with something that's going to re-energize your hobby. All right, so I think I've based enough guys for tonight because some of these other ones, I still got to do their boots and things, and I don't want to, I don't want to uh, do their bases yet. 
But this is what I wanted to show you. So you remember I was using this uh, kind of this spackling paste, the stuff you can get at uh, Hobby Lobby or Michael's modeling paste to try to fill in these, to try to fill in these, uh, these Lego blocks. But unfortunately what happened is, so I was filling this in and when I filled them in, it was level. But as this material dries and contracts, right, it just shrinks inside of the inside of the channel there. So the the the, uh, the protrusions or the sockets are still sticking out. I mean, it didn't fill in anything. If I try to flock this now, I'm gonna just have. I think I'm going to just have flock going down these channels, and you'll still be able to see these on the top. Maybe not. So I am going to paint this, but I'm going to use craft paint. I don't want to use any of my good uh, hobby paints to paint this, and I don't have any craft paint right now. I don't think I do. I may have some. One second. Okay, no, I don't have any. I remembered I had bought some dollar store uh, paints in the bottles that they come in and I thought I might have still had some of that but I think I tossed all of that stuff when I was moving because I had zero room left for it so I have to rebuy that but I just wanted to show you guys how that turned out because I would not recommend trying that you're probably gonna have to use some kind of quick drying clay uh, or unless you got a professional sander and you just sand these down and even them out and make them flat. But I'm not too worried about it. I think I can, like I said, I think I can paint over it and then flock it. And it shouldn't show up too much. So uh, that is the plan with that. But I did want to show you guys that in this hobby chat. So we are at 37 minutes. Which I think is going to be a long enough chat. Uh, I'm going to try to keep doing these. Let me know if you guys like them. I mean, it's kind of one of the only ways I can get some videos out on nights like this. Because uh, at this time of night, this is the only thing I really got any energy to do. It's like some light flocking, some gluing. I didn't even get to the, the glue and the repairs. I will save that for the next chat. Take care, everybody. God bless. Thank mm -hmm. you.